we are legally fit. Welcome to our podcast. The information provided in the show is for general informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice on any subject matter. No attorney client relationship is created between you and Duran and Duran Jules Law. Hi, welcome to Legal Assist. I'm Attorney Wen. And I'm Attorney March. Welcome to our podcast. In this episode, we will be discussing about spouse visa. Oh, maganda topic yan. Yes. Di ba foreigner ang asawa mo? Yes! Okay, so we'll discuss about foreign spouse visas in the Philippines. Correct. Alright, so what is a foreign spouse visa? It's a visa granted to foreigners that are married to Filipinos and allowing them to stay in the Philippines for a long period of time. So in your situation, being married to a foreigner, what is the visa of your spouse? Because there are different types of visas for a foreigner in order to stay in the Philippines. Okay. You being the case. My husband holds a 13A or spouse visa. He's an American, so there is a reciprocity. Uh, with the USA. Reciprocity means uh, the other country, which is the foreign country of your spouse, should also be giving the same privilege to a Filipino if that Filipino would want to have a visa in that country. So if there is no reciprocity, the option would be a TRV or Temporary Resident Visa. All right. So what are the requirements for a foreign spouse visa in the Philippines? Most importantly, you have to be married to a Filipino. Okay. Stay there. <laughs> right. And you have to have a PSA certificate of marriage. So there are situations when couples or spouses are married outside of the country. And because of that, their marriage certificate are issued by outside of the country. How will the government, the Philippine government, know that you are married to a foreigner if your marriage is not registered in the Philippines and not recorded with the PSA? So the solution to that is if you are married to a foreigner and you were married outside of the country, meaning it was solemnized outside of the country, there is an ex- extra step for you to be able to get a PSA or Philippine Statistics authority certificate so you should get a copy of original copy of your marriage certificate have it apostilled and then report it before the department of foreign affairs and then the department of foreign affairs or the dfa will endorse it to the psa give or take it would be about three to four months before you can get a certified two copy or a psa copy of your marriage certificate Oh, well, if the parties are married outside the Philippines and they report it directly to the Philippine Embassy or Consulate. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. You're right. Of course. Yeah, there are two options. You, When you're already here in the Philippines, you report it to the DFA. But if you are still uh, outside of the country, then you report it to the nearest consulate. All right. So what are the other requirements aside from the PSA marriage certificate and your spouse being a Filipino? Yes, you have to have an NBI, National Bureau of Investigation Certificate. Clearance. Correct. You also have to have a joint letter request addressed to the commissioner stating that you want to secure uh, this particular type of visa for your spouse. To a um, letter to the commissioner of immigration. Correct. Um, you have to have uh, Bureau of Immigration Clearance, meaning there is no derogatory um, report against your spouse. Or not in the blacklist order of um, immigration. Correct. And of course, the form. Uh, there are also a questionnaire that the Bureau of Immigration will be asking you. For example, how you met, what are the factors you liked about your husband. So you mean to say that the immigration officer will still have to interview the foreigner or both of the both us? Both. You have to show yourselves before the immigration officer because they don't want, you know, a spurious marriage. So they have to verify if uh, you really are married to each other and you're not doing this because you just really want to have a visa. Okay. So what are the benefits of having a foreign spouse and visa? Okay, if you are really intending to reside in the Philippines permanently, then financially, it would make sense to you 
because you don't have to pay for a tourist visa every once in a while. Like when you renew it, that's more or less 3,000 pesos every month. You can renew it every two months, three months, six months, and then there's a maximum of stay of continuous stay in the Philippines of two years. After that, you have to leave the country and then return. That can be quite expensive. If you really are wanting to stay in the Philippines permanently, then you secure a spouse visa or a DRV for your spouse, foreign spouse. Is there a valid fee period or a term for the spouse visa? Yes, for the first time application, the visa that will be given to you will be probationary. That would last for one year. After that, you ask it to be converted into a permanent visa. And then that would last for five years. And then every five years, you can have it renewed. You compare it with other type of visa, for example, Niger visa, right? You are married to a foreigner, and then that foreigner wants to work in the Philippines. So the advantage of having a spouse visa versus a working visa for a foreigner would be you won't need the sponsorship of the employer to apply for the visa in the Philippines. Remember in our previous discussion about 9G visa, you need an employer, correct, a sponsor. You need the business permit, audited financial statement, general information sheet if it's a corporation. You need an alien employment permit before you can have your working visa. And it will last you about six months before you can get your working visa versus a spouse visa it would take you just uh, two average two months to three months then you can get your visa already and you can do it on your own another one is um, foreigners married to a filipino are exempted from securing an alien employment permit but you do need to have an alien employment permit exemption certificate this would say that you are married to a Fil- filipino and you are exempted from securing an alien Right, so meaning to say your foreign spouse can already establish his own company or work in the Philippines here independently. Yes, work in the Philippines, yes. But establishing a company, we need to uh, a little bit clarify that because there are restrictions as a foreigner in owning a business. So it depends on the type of industry um, and the capital that you're willing to put up. So if you are considering, your foreign spouse is considering entering into a business, then um, take a look at the Foreign Investment Act negative list because there are maximum requirements of equity that the foreign person, regardless if that person is married to a Filipino or not, can own as an equity in a domestic corporation. Okay, so having a foreign spouse visa in the Philippines, is there an issuance of ACR? Oh, yes, yes. That is actually one of the benefits of having a spouse visa. You will get an ACR, Alien Certificate of Registration, non-tourist. Having that ID will open a lot of doors for you. For example, it'll be easier for you to open a bank account, easier for you to enroll your kid uh, to a school because they would want to see the visa status of the parents. And it's an extra identification for you having an ACR. When you leave the country, however, you will be similarly situated as to a Filipino. You need to pay for a travel tax. So this is um, every time you go out the Philippines? Yes. If you already have an ACR, non-tourist, spouse visa, you need to pay similarly as what Filipinos would pay. This is a travel tax. When do you usually apply? apply for a foreign spouse visa? I mean, is it necessary that the foreign spouse is already here in the Philippines or can it be applied while the parties are still outside the Philippines? Uh, you have to be in the Philippines because you need to present your passport. You need biometrics, meaning they'll take a picture of you, they'll take your uh, fingerprint before your visa can proceed. But you ha- I have to add, you know, you really have to intend to stay in the Philippines permanently because there are options for you to stay in the Philippines if you just want to stay here like maybe a year or less than a year. For example, uh, you can enjoy the Baligwayan visa. But there is a rule there. When you travel, you have to travel with your spouse, Filipino spouse, when you enter the Philippines and then you will be given a one-year Baligwayan visa. That means you don't have to renew your visa every 30 days, 60 days, or 6 months. You don't have to pay for the 3,000 pesos more or less 
in visa fees because you can stay uh, using the Balikbayan visa for one year. So Balikbayan visa is different from a foreign spouse visa. Oh, yes, yes. Balikbayan visa is given to those foreigners that are entering the Philippine territory with um, a relative who is a Filipino or a former Filipino. So if you are a spouse to a Filipino or a foreign Filipino, when you enter the Philippines together with that person, you will be stamped with the Balikbayan visa. But note that when you leave the country and then you re-enter without your Filipino spouse, then you will get the regular 30-day visa right. and then you have to yeah. renew it. Yeah. Yes. So if you are just intending to stay here for maybe eight months, nine months, or a year, and you don't want to pay for the visa, then you make sure you enter the Philippines with your spouse. You don't have to get a spouse visa for that. But if you really want to stay here permanently and work, then yeah, you have to. It's recommended that you get your spouse visa. Um, the foreign spouse visa is premised on the foreigner being married to a Filipino spouse. So. How about in a situation where in a foreigner is already divorced with the Filipino spouse? Can the foreigner still use that foreign spouse visa to enter in the Philippines? Well, notwithstanding the fact that the divorce has not yet been recognized in the Philippines. Yeah, very, very good question. Because in the Philippines, you know, we don't recognize divorce, right? If the foreigner divorce the Filipino in their country, that divorce will not be known to the Philippines. So you have to go through the recognition of foreign divorce in the Philippines before that registered marriage in the Philippines can be dissolved. So I would say, in my opinion, that um, holding a spouse visa, there is a continuing obligation that you are married to a Filipino. Otherwise, you risk of being blacklisted because you're enjoying a benefit that shouldn't be given to you because you're no longer married to a Filipino. While you can argue that it has not been um, dissolved, your marriage has not been dissolved in the Philippines, it's, you know, you want to slide in the air of being conservative. And you don't want to risk that, especially if you have reasons to be here in the Philippines. For example, your work is here or you have a child who is a Filipino or dual citizen, um, if you're blacklisted, you know, it's going to be difficult to see your child and you don't want that um, to happen to you. You don't want that risk. You mentioned a while ago about a um, situation wherein the party says already a child or yes. chosen. So in a situation wherein a foreign spouse has been issued a foreign spouse visa, is there a derivative um, visa that can be issued to a child or children of that foreign spouse saying that the spouse or the children is not even a Filipino children? Oh yeah, that's a very good question and frankly I don't have a definitive answer to that. And if the foreigner is married to a Filipina and there is a child Presumably, that child is a Filipino citizen and will not need to be sponsored by the mom, right? But you just also have to do the um, registration of birth if that person, if that child was um, born outside of the country. You know, you regular rule on um, informing the consulate or the Department of Foreign Affairs that this child has been born to a Filipino and then it, it will be forwarded to the PSA. Or if that person is... Um, if the child is born in the Philippines, then it's a regular process with the PSA. But your question is, if this foreigner was previously married, right? To or just have a child. Oh, just have a child. Yes, you're right. Can that person, can that father foreigner get uh, a visa, a derivative visa? Looking at the requirements of the Philippine immigration, I can see that there is a portion there that you can add a dependent. Um, to your spouse visa. But you have to show a uh, relationship with the petitioner. So unfortunately, that will be a little bit in the gray area because, you know, the child is not related by blood to the Filipino. So, yep, I, unfortunately, that is something that I cannot answer definitely. For now. For now. Uh, we compared the benefits of having a spouse visa versus uh, 9G. We can also compare the benefits of having a spouse visa versus a retirement visa. So what's a retirement visa? Yeah, for a retirement visa, you 
apply this before the PRA, Philippine Retirement Authority. But there is a financial requirement there, 20,000 USD or 50,000 USD, depending on the type of SSRV that you will be applying for. So if it would be a retirement visa, you need to shell out money, a significant amount of money to get the retirement visa. Versus if you are, you will be applying for a spouse visa, there is no money that will be involved other than your continued obligation to be married and hopefully happily married with your spouse so that you uh, can continue having or so that you can apply for spouse visa. All right? All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>